Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome, dear brothers and sisters, to another one of your live and exclusive programs, Viewers Pulse. I'm your host for the evening, Junaid Da. Dear brothers and sisters, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you all for tuning in, and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept it from us, from yourselves, and from, home, uh, from the whole channel uh, as a good deed. Dear brothers and sisters, the program is live and it's coming to you from your favorite channel, Huda TV. We have this hour together. This hour is your hour. It's the opportunity for you to get in touch with us. It's the opportunity for you to bring forward your comments, your thoughts, your suggestions, and even your positive criticisms. Dear brothers and sisters, effectively, Viewers Pulse has two main aims. You want to first and foremost look at the week that has gone by look at the programs and review them. So let's look at the highlights of these programs and let's hear what you have to say about them. Secondly, we'd like to give you some insight into what's coming up, the programs that you'll be watching in the coming week. We have some very beautiful topics coming up. We have some exclusive guests coming as well. So this is the hopeless point of this program, Viewers Pulse, where we bring to you the live and up-to-date information that we have. But the program can never be complete without yourselves. So we want you to participate. Dear brothers and sisters, now, how can you participate? First and foremost, you can call us. And the number that you need to call will be running across the screen very shortly, and it does begin with zero zero two. Now, calling us is the best way to get in contact with us because we'll be put live into the studio. Your question or your comment will be put into the studio and inshallah ta'ala I will try to address it uh, in the best way that I can. For whatever reason, if you're unable to come to the telephone, you do have the option of emailing us. You can email us at uh, pulse at huda.tv. You have our email address and you can contact us through email. Now, we have plenty of emails from you over the week and inshallah ta'ala we will look through the emails and we will read them out. And we have some very beautiful and touching uh, responses from brothers and sisters during this last week. Dear brothers and sisters, if you are unable to email, you can always contact us via Facebook. You have our Facebook account, which is facebook.com forward slash Huda TV. Now, the Facebook page is really amazing. It's one of my favorites. Why do I say that? First and foremost, the page is so colorful and it's so bright and it's full of so many videos and Islamic reminders that you can spend hours on the page and benefit so much. Secondly, the page itself will link you to the official uh, Huda TV webpage and this webpage will show you our programs, the schedule that we have for the whole week and it will give you the airing times and give you some insight into the speakers and into the presenters. So you'll get the official uh, web page and you'll also get some background information on what's going on behind the camera. So don't miss out on the official web page. The Facebook page, dear brothers and sisters, I have some very good news. In the last week, the last time you saw me here on Viewers Pulse, we were, the views that we had were just under 240 thousand but alhamdulillah this morning when we had a look at our page the numbers were over 240,000 actually if I'm right in saying 241,050 uh, so mashallah ta'ala the numbers are increasing on the Facebook page on Huda TV and this is really really uh, progressive we encourage you to jump onto our page and to like it now first and foremost we encourage you to like the page and secondly, we would like for you to forward the page uh, to your friends and your families and encourage them also to like it. Why do we say this, brothers and sisters? Huda TV is an Islamic Dawa channel. Our aim is to promote authentic Islam to as far and wide as we can. So our audience is the whole world. We want to try and encourage and try to educate people correctly. So you will get the reward of joining in on this great habit. Now, dear brothers and sisters, don't forget that the Prophet wasallam, he said that the person who encourages another person to do a good deed, and then this person carries out that good deed. 
the person will get his fair, his fair share of good re reward. But at the same time, the person who encourages the good will also uh, get the, uh, the, the share of the reward. So brothers and sisters, you forward the links, inshallah, forward our pages, and we all in turn will share uh, in the reward. So that's our Facebook page. Dear brothers and sisters, you can also contact us on our Twitter account, which is called the TV channel. The Twitter account is amazing. Why? Because you get immediate contact with us. You get immediate responses, Islamic reminders. Uh, you'll get up-to-date information about the programs that are coming out. So we have our daily live programs, which are uh, programs like Huda uh, Tonight. And you also have the weekly programs like Let's Talk and Viewers Pulse. You'll get all the latest information uh, coming to you from uh, our channel. So don't miss out on our Twitter account. Dear brothers and sisters, we have the most important uh, media source. It's YouTube. Visitors on our YouTube page. Now, why do I say it's the most important? Because we are a TV channel and YouTube uh, offers you the opportunity to watch our programs via live streaming. Now, uh, Alhamdulillah, we have managed to go into a number of different continents and countries and people are able to watch us via satellite. But at the same time, uh, we are still working uh, on some uh, frequencies, so you have to be patient with us. So those who are not able to watch us via satellite, you can watch us uh, via the internet by the click of a button and you can see us through live streaming. So dear brothers and sisters, do go to our YouTube page and do subscribe. At the same time, on our YouTube page, you do have uh, an archive of all of our programs. So you can go back and look at previous programs and you can see uh, the improvements and you can see the different uh, uh, topics that have been discussed and also uh, you can add to these programs, you can add your comments and your feedbacks and you can tell us which programs you enjoyed the most. So do jump onto our YouTube page and brothers and sisters do subscribe at the same time. And finally, we have our Skype account. Dear brothers and sisters, you can join us on Skype, which is Huda underscore TV. Uh, and you can join us there with a live discussion. You can, you can call us by voice or by video. And there will be somebody there to respond uh, to your call, which is Huda underscore TV. It's another way of getting in contact with us. So brothers and sisters, there is a whole uh, way for you to contact us. And this program, Viewers Pulse, is all about you. We want to hear uh, what you think of Huda TV and what you think of the programs uh, that have gone by. Now, dear brothers and sisters, we regularly do a review of our viewers. We like to see uh, the viewers' rates. We want to do two things. First and foremost, we want to have a look at our YouTube viewers. So, how many of you have been watching our videos on YouTube and which country is in the lead? We like to make a list of the top three countries uh, that are watching our videos on the YouTube. So you can see a chart coming up on the screen. And in third place, we have with us the KSA. They are enjoying our programs on the YouTube channel. In second place, we have with us the UK. And in first place, MashaAllah, the US, they are uh, enjoying our programs via YouTube. So dear brothers and sisters, we encourage you to jump onto our YouTube and to watch our videos there via live streaming. Where are all the other countries? Where is Nigeria? Where is Sierra Leone? We get so many phone calls from these countries. So let's see uh, if next week you can increase uh, these rates and these numbers. So we've had a look at YouTube. What about the Facebook? Who uses our Facebook page and who is the most habitual user? We have three countries here. Oh, mashallah, as, just as I mentioned the name, we have three countries here in third place. We have, mashallah, Egypt, which is uh, in third place when it comes to using Facebook. In second position, we have India. Mashallah, we're reaching across different continents, different parts of the world. And in first place, mashallah, with a huge uh, usage, and that is Nigeria. Just as I mentioned the country, I see that you come number one in usage on uh, Facebook. So brothers and sisters, again, we strongly encourage you to get involved and strongly encourage you to watch our programs via YouTube and share your thoughts and comments uh, with us on Facebook. Dear brothers and sisters, now we'll have a look at some of your emails. We've had a number of emails this week and really our team has been very busy in compiling uh, these emails and providing responses. So we've only managed to pick a few, so we'll inshallah uh, try to cover these emails. First and foremost, we have an email from Sister Amina Noor. Uh, the sister writes an email. As a convert myself, 
Masha Allah, I love hearing the stories of how others find Islam. I found it through YouTube videos and took my shahada the first day I started researching. Subhanallah. It just made sense. Uh, I would love to see more programs talking about people's stories to Islam. Now, dear brothers and sisters, I have a comment to make about this particular email and about this particular person, Amina Noor, our sister Amina Noor. Uh, she has been in contact with the channel over the last week or so and she has uh, been very active, I should say, and she has also revealed to us her story and how she became a Muslim. And really, she touches on it in the email that I just read out, that she, in, she watched YouTube videos and she researched herself, and she became a Muslim. But her story is a lot uh, longer than this, and it's very inspiring and it's very beautiful. Now, I want to encourage the, the viewers uh, to stay tuned because, inshallah ta'ala, uh, we will read out her story in our next coming episode of Viewers Pulse and you'll get to see the details of how Sister Amina Noor came to Islam. And dear brothers and sisters, this is an encouragement for you all. We encourage you all to get in contact with us and to give us your stories. How did you come to Islam? It could be somebody that, who wasn't a Muslim and became a Muslim, or it could be a person who was born Muslim, but he never considered his faith or never became serious and something happened uh, some point or some spark and then he became a practicing Muslim we love to hear your stories and more importantly we like to share them on air so that everybody can benefit and you inshallah ta'ala will get the reward and sister Amina Noor here who has inspired this project or this idea she'll get the reward as well as she is the source of this idea so next week inshallah uh, we will read out her full story uh, we have another email, and uh, this email is also from Sister Amina Noor. But she writes, I asked on Huda tonight's Facebook about why Huda did not have female hosts or guests. One of your colleagues replied simply that it wasn't the policy of the channel, mashallah. She writes, I was very impressed with the speed at that which I received a reply, mashallah. Thank you for responding. It encourages me to ask more questions and to spread the great news of this channel, inshallah. I will be able to watch it in the USA and I can direct my non-Muslim family stroke friends to the channel to answer their questions. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Now, Sister uh, Amina Noorhe, uh, she asked us a question about why we do not have uh, female uh, uh, guests or hosts. And uh, the team responded by saying it is the channel's uh, policy uh, to at this moment in time to keep the people in front of the cameras uh, males um, this is due to the policy and secondly uh, due to the facilities and, and, and the practicality at this moment in time uh, we do not have that facility but mashallah the main thing here in this uh, email which really inspires me and motivates me is how sister Amina uh, she received a quick response from our channel our channel is working very hard we have a team dedicated uh, for Facebook and YouTube and they work uh, all around the clock trying to bring about answers to your questions and solutions and use your ideas to uh, bring about programs. So do contact us as you will get an immediate response. If you didn't receive an immediate response, we do apologize and inshallah ta'ala, we will respond uh, as soon as we can. Then we have our third email, which is from brother Usman Ahmed. He says, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I am Usman Ahmed from Ethiopia. In our country, things are becoming bad for Muslims. Our Muslim scholars are now in prison and the law is expecting to be ratified in the parliament that prohibit praying in government universities or schools. And it also denied the wearing of hijab in government offices and university. Brother Usama Ahmed contacted us all the way from Ethiopia. Now, dear brother, uh, Osama Ahmed, it's a very sad case uh, that our brothers and sisters are being discriminated in this way uh, in your country. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ease their affairs and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us more sincere uh, in worshipping him and for him to allow us to continue in worshipping him. Brother uh, Usman Ahmed, I would further say that you have done the right thing by contacting us uh, because you've highlighted the case and made uh, thousands of people aware of what's going on in your country. And inshallah ta'ala, brother, if you can contact us and uh, we can possibly uh, have a program where we can have an expert on your country and we can discuss this in one of our programs, possibly Huda tonight, uh, or, 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 or a similar program and r uh, raise awareness of the issues. Dear brothers and sisters, I would like to make a quick mention 
uh, of a, a very important point, and then we will go over to a break. Brothers and sisters, can you believe that by the end of this year, MashaAllah, Hoda TV will be entering its 10th year, 10th year of being on air? SubhanAllah, that's absolutely amazing. Hoda TV is about to become 10 years old. So, dear brothers and sisters, stay tuned. We're going to go over for a short break, and then when we come back, I will give you uh, some uh, announcements and some uh, results for our question from our previous week. So, dear brothers and sisters, let's go for a short break and join me in just a few moments. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is your brother Abdurrahim McCarthy coming to you from the studios in London where I'm filming my new TV show Tarbiya for Huda TV. In Tarbiya, we're going to take an in depth look into how the Muslim makes Tarbiya of himself, how he educates himself and trains himself according to the Quran and to the authentic Sunnah of our beloved Prophet. We're going to see how the Quran and how the Sunnah of our beloved Prophet trained the Muslim. And we're going to see the impact that this Tarbiya had on the Sahaba radiallahu anhum that made them the greatest nation known to mankind. Tarbiya to revive ourselves and to revive our Ummah. Tarbiya only on Huda TV. Of life, a way of life, a way of life, a way of life. Huda TV's social media sites are the best way to contact us from anywhere around the world. Stay connected with Huda TV's latest news and programs through Facebook, Twitter, Google, YouTube, Skype, and Instagram. It's fast and easy. Stay up to date with your favorite shows and scholars today. Huda TV, a light in every home. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome, dear brothers and sisters, to part two of Viewers Pulse. Now, just before the break, we were discussing a very important bit of information. Uh, dear brothers and sisters, Huda TV is entering into its 10th year of operation. MashaAllah, Huda TV is nearly 10 years old. I, I am the first person to announce this to you, and I'm very happy to say this. And dear brothers and sisters, you should also be very happy that this Islamic channel, this Dawah organization, has been calling people to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the last 10 years. So this is the first news I would like to share with you. Um, at the same time, dear brothers and sisters, we would like uh, for you to get involved and for you to participate and enjoy uh, this 10th year of, uh, of operation. How can we do that? We want you to do three things for us, please. First and foremost, we would like for you uh, to share with us any dua pictures that you have or that you have found uh, very interesting or beautiful and you would like for us to use on our webpage. Secondly, any kind of emotional video any video that increased your Iman personally. If you could send that to us, send us the links, you can do it uh, uh, via the Facebook page if you like, Huda Tonight or Huda uh, or Viewers Pulse or Huda TV, as you like, you can bring us forward uh, your uh, videos. And finally, dear brothers and sisters, if you find any piece uh, of uh, video or pictures or anything you find of interest that you really benefited from, maybe it's an article or something you found very beneficial, do share that with us as well and we can present that in our programs. Now, dear brothers and sisters, last week we had uh, a question about the Prophet ﷺ, uh, and, and this week we have the answers for that question. But before I read out the answers, I want to give you, the viewers, an opportunity. It's your chance. Last week we had Um Iman. She called in live in the studio, and she became the winner uh, for our week's episode. So this week, dear brothers and sisters, is there anybody out there who would like to call and share with us the answer to our question. The question was, uh, how old was the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he received revelation? Wahi. How old was the Prophet Sallallahu when he received revelation? If there's anybody who has the answers, please do call in uh, uh, and state your name and the correct answer, please. 
So until then, uh, I want to read out some of the answers that we have received uh, over this week on, on that very question. The first one uh, comes from Sister Fatima Sara. She replies, he was 40 years old. And yes, mashallah ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu he was 40 years old when he received uh, the answer. So that's very good, Fatima. Uh, we have another person calling, uh, uh, responding with the name uh, Am Amuna Ahmed, who also says 40 years old, which is correct. And we have Rukayya uh, Zakaria, our role and model, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, peace be upon him, was 40 when he received revelation. So very good. Three sisters there with the correct answer. We have Sister Sara. Uh, oh, we got a phone call. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, Alhamdulillah, Sister Kara, ask for your name, please. Um, uh, I just want to say uh, I love Hudati for my children. You know, there is no beloved favorite channel me, myself personally, except Hudati. I'm really learning a lot, Alhamdulillah. Uh, Hudati is really close to my heart. And, mashallah, I appreciate your favorite program, Hudati tonight. Uh, not only who that tonight, all other live show program like the live show, uh, live shows, you know, Garden of the Fires, Askuda from your studio and from Zeta, and time to keep Allah from the way. Many, many art idamata, mm -hmm. correct and say Quran, don't be sad. Obviously, many, many other programs, mashallah, I'm really proud by this smart channel. SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah, brother. The more watching Huda TV, the more knows about uh, my Lord. The more knowing about my Lord, uh, the more love my religion. Okay, so the more love my religion, you know, uh, by grace of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, my life is very very successful. Alhamdulillah. Um, maybe it's not fair, yeah, I'm talking about myself to this and that, but I think after watching Huda TV, everything changed my life. And may Allah help with the most beautiful channel and may Allah protect all of making Huda TV. That's Allah khaira. And uh, I want to say, Brother Muhammad Shaki, may Allah bless his soul. Amen. It was uh, very tight. And may Allah grant patience to his family. And uh, finally, uh, for your question, how old was uh, our beloved Allah when he got away? Uh, he was sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 40 years old. Excellent. Sister, could I, get your, um, could I get your name please before you go? Okay, Sister Aisha. Okay, thank you very much, sister. That's, that's fine, mashallah ta'ala. I would like to say a big congratulations and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost accept your phone call. I am inspired and I am honored uh, by your phone call and by your praise. This is all due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessing that you, we are able uh, to operate and you are able to watch the program. And I am so moved at how Huda TV has inspired you and how it has changed your life and how you said it has brought you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is our goal. As every Muslim, it's our job to do da'wah, to call to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what we are doing at Huda TV. And it's your phone calls, phone calls like this from Sister Aisha, who really wakens up the heart, wakens up your emotions and your feelings. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to really sincerely uh, accept it from us, from all of us, those in front of the camera, those behind the camera, and our viewers. We love you all, our brothers and our sisters. Stories like this inspire us and move us. Secondly, Sister Aisha, uh, you are the winner for this week. You called in live in the studio and you gave the correct answer, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was 40 years old when he received revelation so mashallah fantastic brothers and sisters if you want to call in you might not be the winner but you can still share with us your comments and your thoughts and give us the answer at the same time so do call us the numbers are running across your screen and I do begin with 002 let me continue talking and uh, explain to you the, the different people that called us and responded uh, with email sorry about their answers we had Sarah who also said 40 years old we had Muzammal uh, the first gentleman, he said 40. We had Aisha bint Zana who uh, said also 40, the correct answer. Jannah uh, Nabulsi, she said 40 as well. We had Sister Halima, she said 40 at the same time. We have uh, Brother uh, Suha who said also 40. 
Uh, we have uh, Rashida who said 40. We have uh, Bushra, Sister Bushra also said 40. Uh, Ilyas, he also said 40. Uh, Princess, yes, Sonuka at the age of 40, mashallah. And Um uh, Tahira also said 40. And uh, we have Brother Hussam who said 40 at the same time. Khalifa Walton, uh, she, he said 40 as well. Aliyu. Uh, said 40, Sadiq also said 40. MashaAllah, nobody made a mistake this week. Everyone said the correct answer. So we have Shanaz, Brother Yusuf, Suleiman, Muhammad, Hafsa, Sihru. They all said 40. And the last person, we have uh, Rusi uh, Duku, who also said 40 years old. Dear brothers and sisters, we do have a question for this week as well, but I'm going to postpone it towards the end of the program. So do stay tuned, and we want to hear your responses, your, your, your emails uh, to our question coming. Dear brothers and sisters, uh, we're going to move over to a short report where we're going to analyze and look at a clip uh, from one of our live programs, which is Huda tonight. Let's have a look at this clip and then join myself uh, and, and your, your views and your comments on this particular clip in just a few moments. All right, actually, as we are in the revision uh, period uh, before the exam, so I'd like to start with a quick revision of what we said last <laughs> All time. All right, very appropriate. Uh, so w they, just to quickly, in bullet points, mm -hmm. uh, uh, some of the tips that we said last time w was the first thing was to have the proper setting, which is the mm. best place for you to revise. Some mm -hmm. students actually uh, prefer to study on their beds. Mm -hmm. Some of them they prefer to study in front of the TV. And mm -hmm. we said that these things probably would cause either distraction mm -hmm. or probably will lead to them falling asleep. Mm. Uh, so uh, they have the proper setting mm -hmm. uh, and then after that we said also that we try to have study groups uh, sometimes study groups are good uh, but not probably the two days before the exam mm. the two days before the exam you need to pull yourself together sit by yourself and mm. just you know have uh, your own ideas mm. okay mm -hmm. um, then we have the study notes we said how to study and uh, how to study the subject itself we said try to use pictures and use visual aids that will help you to remember later don't depend mainly on the text uh, you may summarize the whole page using just one picture writing it on the top this will help you to remember the main ideas later. Mm. Beside each paragraph, you may also draw a little picture that will remind you of the main idea. So this paragraph, for example, is talking about, let's say, um, any, let's say any idea can be transportation, for example. You may draw like just uh, a little car. Mm -hmm. This will remind you of the whole idea yeah. of, the, mm. um, mm -hmm. of the text. Uh, then also we said, uh, that probably uh, getting enough rest is is very important. Crucial, uh, yeah. Some people actually, some students, they go to the exam before sleeping the night before, uh, without, without sleeping mm -hmm. the night mm -hmm. the night before, and that's that's actually not good at all because mm -hmm. the brain is is very exhausted, mm -hmm. and when it comes to the taking the exam itself, the the brain is is loaded, mm. uh, so they they don't concentrate as much as they should. Mm. Uh, these are just the main points that we discussed last time. All right. Today, actually, moving to the uh, going into the examination room. Um, the first thing that actually the students or they, they should do is that they should go to the examination room with time to spare. Do not be late because. Lateness will cause a lot of stress. Yes. So you go to the examination room before starting anything, before taking the examination, mm -hmm, the, the, mm -hmm. the question paper, you're already uh, stressed out. You're you already stressed, you know, un under a lot of stress because mm -hmm. you're not sure whether you'll be allowed in or not. And so go to the examination room with time to spare. So if there anything, any problem crops up, you may handle it before you start your exam. Mm. The second thing is that make sure you bring everything you need before you start. You should ask about things that you should have in the examination room. If you're studying, let's say, for example, uh, if you're taking a mathematics uh, exam, probably you should have your calculator with you, you should have your set square, you should have... So bring everything you need. Sometimes you may also need a watch mm -hmm. uh, because you know, for Cambridge exams and for other exams, the time. the time, it's a mm. race against time. Mm. So you have to keep, you know, like uh, watching, like you have to have a watch mm. in you. So you keep a record of the time, what you should, how much time you should, should spend mm. on each question. Mm. 
Mm. Don't depend on the proctor to keep you informed at the uh, time. Yes, mm. exactly, exactly. So uh, you may have a, a watch with you. That this will help you to manage the time. For the time also, probably it is, it is highly recommended. We said before that probably studying from the past papers and making predictions and anticipation of the questions and the style of the questions is very important. So also predict the time and have your plan for the time before you start taking the test. I'm sorry, o uh, um, open this up a, a bit. You said uh, about the time. Uh, what were the words you used? Can you repeat that? Uh, to try to have a, a plan for the time, a actually, plan. because oh. for, from, from, the, the, uh, you know, from the past papers, you can uh, know that the, the, uh, the time for the test is about three hours or two oh, hours. Oh, I or see. Uh, so you mean to make a plan for how you're going to use your time. Yes, exactly. Organize your time. You mm. have, like, uh, I'm going to spend, like, let's say, 10 minutes on that, the first question, uh, about 15 minutes on the second one, about, like, 20 minutes on the third Got one, it. and so on. Mm. Um, so it, it definitely you, mu you must enter your exam knowing how much time you should spend on each question. Yes, okay. Personally, I teach, you know, IG students, and uh, we, we know, like, from the past papers, uh, we, we actually ask our students to um, check their past papers before they take the, r the real test, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the, the to, to know how the, what the exam is like, and we to know how much time they should spend on each uh, question. Yeah. So, um, they should have a plan with it for the time before they start. Then, uh, probably after that, they, they scan all the questions. Um, the students should probably scan all the questions before they uh, start answering. Um, just after you finish scanning the questions, mm -hmm. try to start with the easy questions first. Mm -hmm. Easy questions first, so you're done with the easy part, and then probably you can have more time to spend on the uh, more, let's say, difficult um, questions. I could imagine that some students would challenge that and say, I don't have time to look over all these questions and then pick and choose. That's going to eat up my time. What would you say? Um, actually, but uh, I, I, yeah, I, I definitely understand, but probably just having a look at, uh, at all the questions, mm -hmm. it actually happens in, in like few seconds that Kay. you just have an idea about what you are going to answer. And one more time, W using the past papers is very important. Mm. So actually, you know what the exam is going to be like. Mm -hmm. So you're not shocked by the exam. You don't know how. M you already know how how big the exam is and how much time you should spend. <laughs>
So today, inshallah, in our program in the evening, you will see a full detailed discussion on this very topic. So don't miss that. And in segment number three, we will be talking about social reform, how brothers and sisters uh, in, in, in our communities, how we can get involved and how we can bring about a good change, taking away vice and sin away from society. Dear brothers and sisters, we're going to move over to another report. This is taken from the Gardens of the Pious with our beloved Sheikh Muhammad Salah, where he is talking about the narrations of the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. Let's have a look at this and then have a small discussion uh, when we return. <laughs> The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِذَا صَلَّ أَحَدُكُمْ لِلنَّاسِ And لِلنَّاسِ is perfectly fine like bin nasi because it has been narrated in other hadith. Also the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, يُصَلُّونَ لَكُمْ فَإِنْ أَصَابُوا فَلَكُمْ وَإِنْ أَخْطَأُوا فَلَكُمْ وَعَلَيْهِمْ The duty of the Imam who leads a prayer. He is liable. He is responsible. So if he did fine, this is good for you, for the followers. What if they messed up? You guys are fine and they're liable. The whole liability is upon them. And the catch is in using يُصَلُّونَ لَكُمْ Not بِكُمْ They lead the prayer with you. You guys are all involved in the prayer, but they take the lead. The hadith is an indication that it is highly recommended to make the prayer light. Yeah, and the recitation should be moderate, moderate as far as the length. In some prayers, in Maghrib prayer for instance, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam once recited Surah Al-A'raf, and this is a very long surah. He divided it between the first two rakahs, and sometimes he recited Surah Qaf, and then Surah At-Tur. Um, and these surah are kind of long. And sometimes he was sometimes he would recite a shams, a layl, a duha. It depends on the condition and the situation of those who are attending the prayer with him. But whenever the Prophet ﷺ would pray by himself, that's a different issue. Two rakahs. لا تسأل عن طولهن ولا حسنهن. Don't ask how long are these two rakahs, how beautiful, how perfect. When Hudayfa. May Allah be pleased with him, happened to attend the prayer with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He saw him praying the night prayer. So he joined in. And the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam began the recitation with Surah Al-Baqarah in the first rakah after Surah Al-Fatiha. So Hudayfa said, probably he would just recite 100 ayah. And 100 ayah is plenty of Surah Al-Baqarah. Then make ruku'ah. But he didn't. He went on, he said, maybe 200 ayahs. But he still went on, he said, perhaps he's going to finish Surah Al-Baqarah. He finished it indeed, but he started Surah Al-Nisa, then Surah Al-Imran, then Surah... Hudayfa ibn al-Iman said, I was about to leave the prayer because he could not tolerate this long recitation. Because, for your information, the recitation of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was not the only long practice in the prayer. Because he said, Whenever he made ruku'ah, his ruku'ah was as long as the period that he talked to recite these chapters. Then when he rose up from ruku'ah and said, Sami Allahu liman hamida, he stood there for so long, equal time to the time that he consumed to recite these chapters. Sujood likewise and sitting between the two sajjas likewise. So perfecting the prayer in the standing position, in the ruku'ah, in the standing at the ruku'ah, in the sujood, and in the sitting between the two sajjas were all equal. So if the citation is long, and it is prolonged, then similarly the ruku'ah, and in the sujood, and in between the standing and the sitting between the two sajjas. So the Nabi Wasallam ordered, at takhfif whenever you're leading the fard namaz, the fard prayer, because it is not optional for people whether to follow you or not to follow you. If there is only one masjid in the neighborhood or in the city, and you are the only imam, and people are coming because they have to come and attend the prayer in jama'ah, similar to what happened with Mu'ad ibn Jabal, may Allah be pleased with him, and Ubay ibn Ka'b, one of the scribes of the Qur'an. 
who love the Quran so much and love to recite long recitations. And Mu'ad ibn Jabal recited long surah that some of the Musalleen had to leave the prayer. One person who used to have a nadih, a camel, and he used to work in fetching water from the water well. So he was a laborer and uh, he was a handyman and all day working in the excessive heat, extremely hot weather. And now it's night. He's just barely waiting for Isha so that he could pray Isha, then lie down. He would be knocked down right away. But Mu'ad ibn Jabal is, mashallah, enjoying his recitation. And you imagine if Mu'ad ibn Jabal, this great companion, is reciting the Quran, reciting Surah Al-Baqarah. He could not tolerate it. So he stepped out. So some of um, the Sahaba told Mu'ad that this guy left the prayer before you finished. He said, uh, perhaps he's a munafiq. He's a hypocrite. So this statement reached that laborer, that poor companion. He was very upset. It hurt him a great deal because you're, you're judging my intention. You're judging my faith. He right away went to the Prophet wasallam and said, Ya Rasulullah, I'm not a hypocrite. And here is a story. Uh, I work all day to fetch water. I'm so tired, exhausted. Can't wait to pray Isha so that I will fall uh, to sleep. And Mu'adh recited a long recitation. Before this incident, the Prophet ﷺ had warned the companions, those who lead the prayer, to take it easy on the followers, especially in the late prayer, in the Isha prayer, because it is the last prayer of the day. And the Nabi ﷺ said, He who attends, the Isha prayer in congregation will receive a word similar to standing in prayer have night long. And he who attends the Fajr prayer in congregation, his word will be similar to a person who's been standing all night long in night prayer. <laughs>
Alhamdulillah, we got the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Allah has chosen those individuals to be the companion of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They are the best of companions, the best of generation. We got no right whatsoever to say anything bad about them. Whatsoever. But, let me tell you, we're speaking, addressing to the Muslim. You find Muslim nowadays, in some part of the world, they don't like certain Sahaba. They make takfir of certain Sahaba. We should never do this. Again, we speak about aqidah. We spoke about saying bad things to the deen. Now speaking about saying bad things to the Sahaba. Still, your relation between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nothing to do with ibadah. And you've got to understand that the ayah I mentioned in the beginning, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with them. But we've got to understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with them. And it's not our, our job to go and dig what they've done, what they haven't done. We cannot go and remove the bad thing of people. And we've got to understand the Prophet Muhammad and how he praised his Sahaba. He said, those people, number one, he said, whoever, whoever said bad things about my Sahaba, لَعْنَةُ اللَّهِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةِ وَالنَّاسِ أَجْمَعِينَ عَلَيْهِمْ So whoever said bad things about the Sahaba, it could be Abu Bakr or Umar or Uthman, anyone, whoever says bad things about them, the la'na of Allah, and the malaika, and everyone, all the human beings, their curse are upon those kind of people who actually say bad things upon the Sahaba. I mean, and it's enough to, it's enough as a warning to us for the, the, the hadith the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, La tusibu ashabi, you know, do not insult uh, my companions. I mean, that, what more do you need than that? Exactly. If ever you were to, uh, the Prophet said, Let us ahead in ashabi. Do not swear, do not curse any of my sahaba. For verily, if you were, to, yeah. if you were to give in charity the amount of mountain Uhud, Couldn't you would not even reach Come them. close to them. Yes, come close to them, not even half. We got to understand how the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam loved them, and even Ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu anhu said, he said that the athar, he said, Allah subhanahu wa taala looked at the hearts of the ibad, and he found that the heart of the Sahaba they deserve to be in the generation of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So those people who's been there with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they deserve to be there. So who are we to start our speech by cursing? Some of the Sahaba. There are people who actually do that, but we, in general, we say those are the Sahaba that we do not talk about them. Alhamdulillah, they've been praised in the Quran. They've been praised by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Alhamdulillah, those are the things that we shouldn't do or try to dig in what the bad thing they've done. No. And Alhamdulillah, generally, you know, uh, the people who are following the way of the, uh, you know, the Quran and the Sunnah. Alhamdulillah, we are balanced people. You know, we neither talk bad of the Sahaba and we do not talk bad about the Ahl al-Bayt either. We as, you know, as the people on the right path, we, we respect the, the, the Ahl al-Bayt as much as, just as like we respect the companions. Exactly. They are all, um, you, know, we all you know, we believe that if we are to insult and disrespect and, you know, Alhamdulillah, yeah. even go as far as uh, insulting and yeah. calling them non-Muslims, that we ourselves will become non-Muslims. Exactly. Whether it's the Ahlul Bayt or the Sahaba. Yes. So there's a big difference between, you know, you know, and we say, inshallah, we are upon the right path, then others who will claim the opposite and say they are upon the right path, but they uh, not only insult the Sahaba and some of the wives of the Prophet, of the Prophet Sallallahu not only do they insult them and call them non-Muslims, but they start off their lectures in the Masajid, so the most holiest Allah. places, with calling them the kind of names and the kind of speech that you would not expect from any religious man in any religion, let alone Islam. They will say the kind of words that you'd expect from the, from the most, from the kind of football hooligans, you know, who are Sub drunk. And but they open up their lectures or they have lots of their lectures have these kind of words that we can't even repeat on TV. We couldn't even repeat it on TV anywhere unless it was maybe past nine o'clock at night because children are or awake. Oh That's wow. the kind of language that, that they Allah use Allah. in their masajid when they're given their lectures. And we've, exactly. this is not something we have been told. 
we have um, we've seen this ourselves on YouTube. It's av available to see them, whether it's Arabic or whatever language it may be. That's the reason we're telling it here because we don't want the kids just to look at that and then believe what's happening here. That guy got a big beard and a imama. He's talking about this Sahaba, that Sahaba, the one of the Prophet Muhammad. Said, no, who are we? It is enough, like how you said. The Prophet Muhammad said, don't say anything bad about them. The Prophet Muhammad already said, the best of generation are my generation. The one who come after them and the one who come after them. Tabi'in wa idba'at tabi'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome, dear brothers and sisters, joining us back after watching a short report discussing the importance of the Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet, وسلم, where you received a very balanced and very open and very fair uh, stance on how we should treat and how we should deal uh, with the family of the Prophet, وسلم, as well as the companions, uh, the, the, the Sahaba. This uh, doesn't need to be elaborated on any further. Dear brothers and sisters, uh, during this week, we are coming towards the end of the year and people here are uh, enjoying various uh, celebrations be that of Christmas or be that of the new year uh, so this week we have a number of different topics coming to us on Huda Tonight Live where we will discuss the concept of Jesus was he really uh, the, the the son of God and what is this concept like how as Muslims do we understand Christmas and are we allowed to say Merry Christmas and Happy New Year and these things we will discuss this on Huda Tonight during the evenings so don't miss out um, finally dear brothers and sisters I would like to say it's been a fantastic week and your uh, your response on YouTube and Facebook has been absolutely amazing and the best part of this program was Sister Aisha who called us and gave us her uh, her feelings and her emotions uh, towards how she feels with Huda TV and she, how she said it, in, it inspired her. She has inspired me personally and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to strengthen her in her iman and to make us all strong at the same time. Dear brothers and sisters, we have our question for this week. Do respond to us uh, via email and do call us at the same time. We will respond to all of your emails and we will read them out at the same time. The question for this week is, are you ready? And before I read the question, dear brothers, Really, you know, the sisters, uh, two weeks running, have responded on email and on phone call more than yourselves. So this week, I want to see the brothers wake up. The question is, which prophet is most mentioned in the Holy Quran? I'll read that out again. Which prophet is most mentioned in the Holy Quran? Okay, so our email is open. Join us. Uh, on the email and respond there. Dear brothers and sisters, we have come to the end of this week's episode of Viewers Pulse. It's been fantastic here uh, being with yourselves and discussing all the fantastic programs that have come across the week. Please do join us in the upcoming week with all your views, your suggestions, your comments and your positive criticism on all of the different ways of communication that we mentioned uh, earlier. Dear brothers and sisters, I will see you next week, inshallah ta'ala, at the same place, at the same time. So do take care of yourselves and do ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept all of this from us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Come join us and have your say. Let's talk about our way. Remember you are not alone. Huda is the light in your home. We'll talk about Huda. We'll talk about our way. Come join us and have your say. Let's talk about our way. Remember you are not alone. Huda is the light in your